Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for taking the time to join us today. We would like to most humbly welcome you to our sisters Anushka Srivastava and Shambhavi Ranjan's Anangetram. Shambhavi Didi and Anushka Didi have been dancing for a little over 12 years now and have danced a lot to perform in full Anangetram. Both of our sisters have been learning Bharatanatyam under their great teacher, Jeshi Bala Rajamani. Jeshi Didi has been teaching dance has been teaching Bharatanatyam for 26 years. <laughs> and has become a great teacher and mentor for her students. Not only is she a great dancer herself, but she also composes brilliant choreographies and teaches them to her students most exceptionally. Over the past few days, Anushka Didi and Shambhavi Didi have worked immensely hard dancing and preparing everything for this glorious day. We want you to sit back and enjoy the, as these two brilliant dancers perform. Moving on without further ado, we would like to wil welcome Jeshi Didi up to say a few words and then we'll be begin the Arangit. Namaskaram and welcome everyone. Thank you Shivali and Shivangi for that nice introduction. Bharatanatyam. This is the dance form I practice and I teach. It's an ancient dance form and we dancers believe that the dance descended from the heavens itself. When Lord Nataraja descended to the earth to perform this glorious dance for us. Legend has it that many, many, many thousands of years ago, there was peace on earth. There was harmony between the devas, the celestials, and the rakshasas, the demons. And when this harmony was there, they got bored. So they approached Lord Shiva, and they said, oh Lord, can you do something to entertain us? To which the Lord spontaneously arose and started dancing. And the dance was so powerful and beautiful. His wife, Parvati, upon seeing this, too got up and started dancing with her Lord. And together, the two of them created a dance form so beautiful. He providing the Tandava, the power. She providing the Lasya, the grace. And that is the story of how dance came to us mortals. The temple dance that this is known as Bharatanatyam was performed predominantly in the temples, the Hindu temples of South India. The dancer's role was to celebrate the deity within. She would spend her entire life performing for the temple during celebrations and festivals and inviting the people of the village to come in and partake in that religious celebration. Today we perform it in a stage, but in our hearts we still dedicate this to the beings beyond. And that is what keeps this dance spiritual both in a religious sense, but also within ourselves in an emotional manner. The Arangetram is the first step in a dancer's life. It is the moment where she or he literally ascends the stage and donning the ankle bells that were just presented to them in front of an august audience of friends and family to live musicians perform for the first time publicly, announcing that they have arrived. And this is the beginning of years of training and years of performing that is yet to come. So please sit back and enjoy as we begin a journey into a realm from the past to enjoy dance music, drama, and I hope a small amount of emotional and spiritual enlightenment for all of us. So sit back and enjoy Anushka and Shambhavi's Arangetram. Thank you.
have it, we commence the Arangetram with a salutation to Ganesha, the elephant-headed one, the remover of all sorrows, the one who is most beautiful with a pot belly that is said to hold the entire world within it. He is the son of Shiva the Lord of our dance. And he is most compassionate for when I bow to his lotus-like feet, the all-knowing one, the one who is the keeper of the world, blesses me. Gajavadana, the Ganesha Kautam, was the commencement to this afternoon's performance by Anushka and Shambhavi. And it was immediately followed by the Alaripu. The Alaripu is a simple dance whose sole purpose is to allow the dancer's body to open up. Starting with movements of eye and neck, followed by shoulders, arms, and then slowly up-tempoing the dance. That particular Alaripu was done in a three-beat cycle. Shambhavi and Minty will now once again salute the Lord of Dance by performing a Swara Jati. Unlike a traditional Jati Shwaram, the Swara Jati has lyrics to it. So not only do the dancers perform Jatis, which are a sequence of steps, two swaras, which are the melodic notes. But now, they will also tell small stories about the Lord of our dance. This particular swarajati, as I said, is in praise of Lord Shiva. It is a musical composition of Chinna Krishna Dasar. It is in the Ragam Kamas, set to Adi Talam, the swarajati.
after that prayer to Lord Shiva, wherein you also saw beautiful images of Shiva's Tandava, which were on display by Shambhavi and Anushka. We now come to a beautiful song originally composed by the famed Drupad singers, the Gundacha brothers, in praise of Lord Hanuman. It is a completely devotional piece, full of bhakti. And we are interpreting the poet's words to describe how Lord Hanuman, the all-knowing, the one who changes his form, the one who is beloved, to Sri Rama. Gives his prayer to the Lord himself because he is Lord Rama's messenger, devotee. The dancers say that I salute Anjani's son Vayu's son, Vayu, the wind god. For he removes all of our sorrows. He lifts his mace, his gada, and protects all around. The dancers will display the small story of how Hanuman unable to identify the Sanjeevani plant, the plant that gives life, lifts the entire mountain with one hand and flies back to the battlefield so that Rama's brother Lakshmana may be revived. It is to this most amazing Lord do we salute and surrender. Namo Anjani is originally set in the Hindustani rag Bimpalasi. Namo Anjani. <coughs> Oh, 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 oh,
runs anywhere from 25 minutes to 45 minutes, depending. And in this dance, the dancer gets to showcase not only her stamina, because she does very complicated jati patterns or pure dance sequences, but she also gets to showcase her powers of expression, her powers of storytelling. And Bharatanatyam is unique also in that one dancer, at one moment or any given moment, can switch characters and take on multiple roles. This particular one <laughs> is in praise of Lord Murugu. He is the one who rides a peacock and is the other son of Shiva. He is also the beloved of the gypsy Valli. 
So in this varnam, since we have Shambhavi and Anushka dancing, they're going to take on the role of Naika, heroine, and Sakhi, the heroine's friend. The Naika has fallen in love with the most handsome Muruga. And she wonders how her message of love will be sent to him. So she spies the beautiful Sakhi and says, Oh Sakhi, won't you please go and tell him of my love and bring him to me? To which the Sakhi says, Absolutely not. What do you think of me? So the Naika starts thinking, how can I win my friend over? So on a scorching hot day, the poor Saki is grinding the grain and is absolutely beside himself in the heat of the day. So the Naika sneaks up on her and says, come my friend, you don't need to do this. And the Saki says, are you crazy? I have to finish all this work before the sun sets. Who will do it? So the Naika says, don't worry, Saki. You sit down in this cool, shady spot. Here, let me give you a cool drink. And here a fan. Why don't you fan yourself and relax? I will take care of the grinding. Now the Saki is thinking, now why is this one being so nice to me? Why? But she says, okay, I'll sit here. I'll enjoy the cool breeze and my drink. Let me see how she grinds. Naika, of course, wants to get her message of love sent. So she sits there and she grinds and she grinds and she grinds till all the grains are ground. She tells her friend it's complete and goes and puts it in her friend's house. Now the Saki is not, the Naika is not yet done trying to butter up her Saki. So she comes and says, hmm, your hairstyle is horrible. Let me do your hair. She beautifully braids it and makes it into a lovely bun, selects a beautiful fragrant flower and puts it in her Saki's hair and says, oh, so beautiful. And the Saki says, wow, thank you, friend. But why are you doing all this? It's not my birthday. <laughs> so the Snaika sits there and says, well, I have a request. You know, that handsome Muruga, I'm in love with him. Won't you please tell him this and bring him to me? The Saki says, aha, this is what you were doing to me. No, I will not tell him. The Naika says, please, please, dear Saki, go. She says, be gone. You are using me. The Naika is desperate at this point. She sees her beautiful necklace and takes it off and says, Oh, Saki, take my necklace, but please go. The Saki puts on the necklace and it is a beautiful necklace. And she goes, maybe, mm, no. And she throws the necklace at her friend saying, no. That is the first story. And the second story, the Naika elaborates on the, the, the strength and the bravery of Lord Muruga. So the story that will be narrated is that of the evil demon Tarakasura, who conquers all the devas and locks them up one by one. One deva escapes and goes running and moaning and groaning to a young Muruga who says, what is this condition of yours? What happened? Speak. And upon hearing the plight of all the celestials who are locked up by this evil Tarakasura, he says, don't worry, I am here. I will destroy the demon Tarakasura. Mounting his steed, the peacock, he goes off to Tarakasura's abode. And Tarakasura looks at this little chit of a boy and says, Boy, 
What do you want? Muruga says, I have come to destroy you. Fight with me. Tarak Asura looks at him and laughs. You, you little chip. Here, take this ball. Go, go play. Muruga catches the ball and destroys it and says, speak not, but come, show me your strength and fight with me. One of the characteristic traits of this demon Tarakasura is his ability to change form at will. The battle begins, fierce battle ensues, and each time that Lord Muruga kills Tarakasura, first in his form of demon, he assumes the form of a bull. Muruga destroys the bull. Tarakasura changes into the form of a tiger. Muruga destroys the tiger. Tarakasura assumes the form of a vulture and flies away. Muruga takes his veil, his spear, and throws it at Tarakasura. And as the demon falls to the ground, he turns into a tree. And that is the moment that Muruga has been waiting for and throws his spear, cutting the tree in half. And from this tree emerges a peacock. And with one sound, the peacock, Tarakasura, submits to the Lord and agrees to become his steed. So the Naika tells her Saki, Saki, won't you go? Go, my beautiful friend who is like nectar to the bee. Go, tell him and bring him to me. And you'll just have to wait till the end of the Varnam to see if the Saki agrees or doesn't. The Varnam is in Ragam Thori, set to Adi Kanam, and is a composition of Kattamunnar Muttukumar Swami, the Varnam. Thank you. 
Thank <laughs> you. 
raised in Boston. Her Carnatic music training is entirely from teachers in the Boston area. She was initiated into Carnatic music by Srimati Sara Gatuna Sompi. Most of her training was with Srimati Kalpakam Narayanan, with additional teaching from the late Srimati Vasanti Srinivasan, the late Srimati Ranganayaki Sundararajan, and Srimati Tara. She has also learned Veena for many years from Srimati Durga Krishna. Over the years, Maitre has participated in numerous music festivals, regionally and nationally and won many awards and competitions, both for vocal and media. By profession, she is a physician, practicing hematology, oncology at Harvard Vanguard Medical Associates and Denver Medical Associates. Um, I'd like to single out my trade only because she is born and brought up in the US and has learned this fantastic art and is practicing it while living here in Big round of applause for Another born and bred Bostonian, Kumari Rasika Murli on the violin. <laughs> Nimble fingered Rasika, as I like to call her, is an accomplished violinist and vocalist with a very, very proud musical lineage. She started vocal training with her mother, Srimati Gita Murli, a renowned Karnatic vocalist at the very tender age of five. After Rasika's initiation into violin by Srimati Vaijanti, Rasika has been fortunate to be under the tutelage of our very own Tara Mahan, an eminent musician in her own right. Her violin performances are marked by extraordinary musical intelligence and deep emotional involvement, and you certainly saw that in the Varnada today. Rasika has won numerous awards for both vocal and violin competitions held by prestigious music organizations like the Cleveland Aradhana Committee and Simana in New Jersey. She had the honor of winning Simana's prestigious MS Subalakshmi Award at the very young age of 14. Rasika sponsors both as a soloist and an accompanist were very well received in Chennai, India during the December season of 2009. Rasika is a rising junior at Boston University. Rasika Murray. <laughs> Our sparkling eyed flutist, Srimati Hema Bhada Subramanian. <laughs> Hema is a self-taught flautist. She has learned Karnataka vocal music from renowned gurus of Mumbai, Sri Chandrasekhar Bhagavatar and Sri Mati T. R. Balaman. She has many solo recitals to her credit, and she also takes part in Jubilandis and devotional music programs. She has been playing for dance arrangements and recitals for over 20 years and has accompanied many leading dancers in the dance styles of Bharatanatyam, Kuchipuri, and Mohiniyattam. Hema lives in Mumbai and teaches Carnatic music, both vocal and flute. And she also teaches students in the US through Skype. We're fortunate to have Hema with us. She's touring the US right now. Hema Balasana. Finally, and last but not least, Sri Gauri Shankar Chandrasekhar on, on the river. Gauri is a student of Sri K. Kalyani Krishnan from the Tanjore Upendra School of Mridangam. He had the opportunity to advance his Mridangam skills under the able guidance of late Sri Trichy Raghava Ayer of the Bharatiya School of Music and Arts in Mumbai, India. And Kale Mahani Sri Thiruvaru Bhaktavatsalan. He has over 15 years of concert playing experience 
and has accompanied many leading visiting and local artists. He has conducted lecture demonstrations at various music schools in the Boston area, including the Berklee College of Music. He regularly provides percussion support for Indian classical dance ensembles and arrangements in the New England region. Gorish has been teaching students the fine art of percussion. His students have won awards at the Cleveland Aradhana and Solana competitions, and they really are very talented young individuals. He plays other percussion instruments also. You'll see that in the second half of the program, such as the Dhulak, the Congos, and the Tanjira. He has also collaborated and performed with various jazz and bluegrass artists in the Boston area. In 2009, he has recorded Murugam and Tanjira for the Boston Symphony Orchestra's Classical Companion Web Project to encourage young composers. Sri Gorish. So that we come to the end of our first half. There'll be a brief intermission of 15 minutes. So please stretch, enjoy some snacks, and come on right back. There's plenty more dancing. Thank you.